Welcome everybody to episode 162 of The China Show. Yeah. Formerly known as ADV Podcast. Whew. It's been a while since it's been called that. Yeah, and we've got quite the doozy for you today. We're going to be talking about uh, shared bikes and some of the mishaps, but that's just a part of the show. As you know, it's a full-on show, so let's just get right into it. We'll saunter right into it with what's new. And what is new in China, Simok? Uh, I want to ask everyone what's new with you. Because you're part of this show. But actually, I just want to say something. Yeah. We've been getting an uptick in uh, listeners. Mm. So shout out to the listeners. Great. Um, that are not watching our beautiful faces. I do want to remind everyone, if you're listening, actually, please make sure on whatever app you're on, like Apple Podcasts or Spotify or whatever, please give us a five-star rating or whatever rating you find you know, yeah. appropriate. But just give us a rating because um, we totally forgot that there's a lot of you out there. And I noticed when I checked the analytics that it's grown quite a bit. So cool. shout out to you guys and make sure you vote or rate our show. Thanks. Thank you. So, so what's new? Well, we've got a uh, little bit of a firefighter over here, Chinese firefighter. Now, listen, guys, no matter what you might have heard about China or think about China and its modern infrastructure and so on, um, certain basic things like firefighting is actually a bit of a mess. Yeah, it's a foreign concept. It is. It's a foreign concept, and uh, they use foreign equipment and... Well, we've shown you videos before of fake fire hydrants. We've shown you videos before where the fire engines can't make it to the complexes because there are obstacles in the way and the standards are just a mishmash. Anyway, let's see how a firefighter here can operate a fire hose in China. Okay, let's take a quick look. <laughs> to be fair, <laughs> yes, that happens a lot to a lot of people in yeah. training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah. I remember when I was in elementary school, a firefighter showed up and there was like a newbie there and that exact same, same thing, thing happened, happened to yeah. him because those things are powerful. But I oh, just thought that was a bit of fun. Yeah. Now, seriously, here's here's the thing. When we talk about these things, it's not to ridicule China. It's to point out the fact that these things need to be improved. OK, because yeah. I've recently seen some horrific things, which I'd never share on the show of firefighters, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. stuck in a burning balcony next to the, a, a massive blaze with a hose. But. The hose doesn't work, and they're not can't turn it on. The fake guy. fire hydrant thing yeah. it's it's become a phenomenon right now in mm. China because what happens is uh, development will be put in like a new a xiao chu a new xiao chu right? yes. a new area or a xin chu of a mm -hmm. of a of a city. So it's like a new area that like a sprawl that they're expanding on. Yeah. And when they put in the infrastructure there, they need to rush it to get it done to yeah. get the investment. They put money, fake right? drainage. They put fake, fake drainage, and that becomes a huge thing because fake this, trees. This actually used to happen all the time. I used to ride in the outskirts of uh, Baotou, Inner Mongolia, where I used to live, and they'd yeah. have. Just, you know, you hear about the ghost towns. You always hear about the, yeah. this, the same ones over and over again. But a lot of China is ghost towns. Yeah. In a lot of these areas that you'll see, we sort of ride motorcycles out there. It's six lane boulevards with no one there. Yeah. And if it rained at all, which it rarely did, the whole thing became a torrent, yeah. right? Of yeah. flooding, basically. And yeah. what happens is they put these fire hydrants in, in a lot of these areas that are not hooked up to anything. No, no they're not. Anyway, uh, yeah. yeah, with China, there's a phenomenon. If you want anything to change in China, if you want uh, anything to be addressed, the only way that it will ever get addressed or get changed is if there's a loss of face yep. and yep. embarrassment. Sure. If the local Chinese government is embarrassed, that's the only time they'll step up and actually fix it. And Very that's true. kind of a purpose of, behind a lot of what we do here. Yeah. So anyway. No problem. You can fix it. Now, this again um, is uh, a building. This is very new footage, and you can just see the cladding falling right off of that. This happens all the time. Yeah. It happened, you know, my, my wife bought an apartment, mm -hmm. and it was part of a big apartment complex. And one of the buildings in the apartment complex, this happened. Yeah. I was there, and I heard a massive crash, went outside. I couldn't capture it on film because it had already fallen down. You know what's worse than this? What? The actual building's falling down, which happens a lot. Sure. Uh, actually, a coworker of mine got nailed with one of those pieces of cladding. She got a concussion. It got knocked out flat on the ground. Well, you can die. Yeah. I mean, that's not light. She has permanent damage in her yeah. head. I mean, you look at the damage. It, yeah, you can take a look. Because it looks like a, you know, so, yeah. so big. It does a lot of damage. You can see it would crush a car, crush the stuff, right? Dense stuff. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it hurt you. I mean, it hit a guy who was waiting in his car. It actually hit his car. You know what's bad is a lot of these are, this is this one's up, but they're tile. The tile ones are F1. Sure. Down south. Down south. 
哥们，这不这不行？哎，那块又又要下来了。哇、哦哦哦哦哦哦，风停了。You know, it's sad as these people could potentially, especially you know, after this goes around on the, the internet, especially in the West,、uh, these people could get in trouble for, for filming this. Just like people filming out their window, they could actually. This is illegal what they're doing. Well, to share anything, that's what I mean. Bad, yeah. yeah. So they could see it completely smash the guy's sunroof of his car, and you know he's got a little bit of blood on him there. He's not、uh, doing too well, and that's what happens when this cladding falls off the building. So,、oh, yeah,、um, smash the windshield.、Oh. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty bad. The rear, the rear window's also smashed out. Anyway. Yeah, let's move on to something a little more lighthearted, and that's Jeff dying. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you guys remember COVID? Do you remember that? Absolutely. That was a thing. Absolutely, do.、Uh, China made a like pseudo pandemic bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they yeah. made a pandemic, and then、yeah. they touted the cure,、mm-hmm. which to them,、uh, for the Chinese government, was Lianhua Qingwen, which、yeah. was a state-sponsored medicine company that literally was just ephedrine with a bunch of bullshit herbs. Yeah. Now, last week we showed you、uh, another one of the cringe adverts. Yes. Okay, and we've got many more. So last time it was the Ukrainian guy who wanted to like really aggressive, <laughs> screaming at the soccer、yeah. match, and you know, basically abusing his wife <laughs> by force feeding her these things and so, the camping. Thing. Yeah, so、uh, <laughs> a fantastic, a fantastic、uh, user,、mm-hmm. uh, which I've linked in the description, by the way, because he uploaded both these episodes、uh, to、cool. his channel.、Uh, show him some love. But、uh, he made this a fantastic rendition of one of our favorites, which was Jeff. Jeff, yeah, Jeff, the the guy who's sick and his his wife, who we theorize is dead. His dead wife is in his imagination, is feeding him these pills. These pills. So, but this is a parody of the original ads, which were so bad and ridiculous,、yes. right? But anyway, I want to refresh you. So we're going to show you the original Jeff parody ad that we、yes. um, are subscribers to together, because there's a sequel. So let's take a look. We'll get ourselves out of here, and we're just going to play it. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, check the pills, Jeff. You have a cold. <laughs> Jeff, you have a cold. <laughs> Developing minds. Yeah. So that was the original parody. I mean, then、um, we did show the original advert before this parody was called, done, and it's so tone deaf. It's, it's not that. <laughs> it's and it, it's ridiculous because it's it's a, you know a chi- the Chinese producer obviously in his mind this is how foreigners kind of interact with each other. Yeah, like Jeff, you have a you have a cold. Take the pills. Take、Jeff. the pills. Yeah,、and、he's like okay. Here, take it. <laughs> and then she stare, stares and he looks at a picture of her wearing the same outfit that she was wearing. Yeah,、there. and yeah. it's like the most like. Yeah, like you know, you would never frame that photo, <laughs> no, no. right? Like, look at that. Go back to that photo. Yeah, that photo is so you bad. You would never frame this photo. And again, yeah. yeah, she only has one outfit. Yeah, so she see the outfit she's wearing, and then where, where, where is that stupid photo? Like, who frames that photo? <laughs> it's like it's just like, the worst photo.、Ever. Oh yeah, they just had to quickly get a photo、yes. out for him to hold.、Yeah. So、uh, it was a ridiculous advert. That was a really fun parody of it. And then now there is a,、uh, a sequel called a sequel.、Uh, Liang Huaqing Wen Two. Yeah. So we thought we'd just play it for you. Dimitri, we need to steal more units now. Somewhere in the darkest corners of an unnamed corporate tower, a pair of executives plan their infiltration at every important moment of your life. Jeff, take your pills. Yeah, man, she 
kill Jeff and she'll kill us too. No, everything is going according to plan. Don't take the pills, man. There's something in the pills. It's changing people. Nothing cool. No one is beyond their reach. Not even the children. Your friends. Your family. They meant well. But the road to hell is paved with good intentions. And this time, something went wrong. She's gone! Leave her! We have to get out of here now! Oh. Leon Hua Ching Wen 2 The Legacy of Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> it's been anyway, absolutely fantastic. We loved it. So uh, we thought we'd share share that yeah. with you. Show him some love. It's in the uh, his channels in the uh, description. Yeah. Um, you know the there are so many, by the way. <laughs> there are so get this shit off of here. <laughs> get this. We'll get to that. I mean, I'm yeah. open minded, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, anyway, um, what was I gonna say? Oh, there's way more Lian Hua Ching Wen. Uh, oh yeah, we've got sequels more sequels yeah. and like all kinds of fresh ones. It's interesting because they they obviously had a set time and a set amount of actors, yeah. and so they decided to make this whole big campaign. It's like lore. Yeah, and they kind of made them meet up with each other, and there's it's a very interesting kind of situation. So we'll get into it. You'll keep seeing Lian Hua Ching Wen yeah. on this channel. So uh, uh, I in was the gonna future. the next one. I was gonna do the. Um... How about the marriage? The, the marriage. The one? marriage one, right? Yeah. And she's like, gets COVID, but then answers the door. Oh, that one. That yes, one. yeah, that one. That's, Let's that's do a that. Good one. Cool. So uh, before we continue, we have a quick word from our sponsor. So please bear with us. Let's take a look. You know bad. the old saying, "Don't go into battle without armor." Well, the same applies to the internet. It's a jungle out there. Sure, we all use the internet. But not many of us can truly understand just how dangerous it is these days. Everybody's out to get you. They're all trying to make a buck off of you. They all want your personal details. They all want to spy in on your stuff. They want to see what you're doing. They want to grab your passwords. It's not safe. But there's a way to protect yourself. And that is by using a VPN. And we use Surfshark VPN. A VPN acts as a secure tunnel, which ensures that whatever you're doing on the internet is kept away from prying eyes, including your ISP. A VPN also allows you to hop around to servers all over the world so that you can get very region-specific deals or watch programs that are banned or not available in your country at the time. It's incredibly convenient. And of course, if you're out there in coffee shops, in hotels, using their Wi-Fi, you absolutely need to use a VPN. Go to surfshark.deals forward slash ADV podcast to get 83% off a two year plan and three extra months completely free. Go to surfshark.deals forward slash ADV podcast. Okay. What are we looking at here? We're looking at an aircraft carrier. All right. All right. So uh, this is the Fujian aircraft carrier. It's China's new aircraft carrier, which, you know, they unveiled it uh, last year, you know, and it was like, I don't know. It's launch or whatever, but it's not finished. Do they launch an aircraft carrier? They launch, yeah. I mean, you do. Yeah. You launch a boat, right? You just push it out. Yeah, it's like, yeah. <laughs> Smash Off a you go. good bottle of wine. <laughs> yeah. they, I don't yeah. know if they do that in China. A bottle of Baijiu <laughs> or something. Dong, dong. Yeah. yeah, so basically, um, it's their new aircraft carrier, and it's not completed. It's still in the outfitting stage. Uh, last time we showed it, it didn't have smokestacks or anything on it yet. But uh, some eagle-eyed people have been noticing online, this has been going around recently, that it appears to have cracks on the deck. Two very large cracks over there. Um, which doesn't surprise me. No. Um, I mean, it was like uh, when they were bragging about it, it wasn't even finished. Remember we yeah. covered that? I mean, that's the whole point, is that this is kind of China's uh, first attempt at building one of these big carriers from the ground up, right? Yeah. They started in 2015, I believe. Then it was like unveiled in 2022, as we said, like that, that launch, but it's still not done yet. And I mean, there are definitely going to be a lot of teething problems sure. in this thing. So, I mean, I could absolutely believe that there are uh, cracks and issues. I, I wouldn't say teething problems. They made plenty fine buildings in the 80s and 90s, and they're really bad now. Yeah. Things have gotten worse, dude. It's just yeah. their quality's gotten worse. Too much corruption. Again, I think this is a, a symptom of this whole, we we say we're going to do something and we have to do it. You know, the government's like, we're going to prove to the world that we're the strongest, you know, going to build the strongest military or whatever. So we need to put something out there to impress people. And they 
you know, the generals pass it down to whoever yep. who passes it down to whoever. And they're like, build this now. You know, we need, we've said that we're going to make the this high tech aircraft carrier. So do it. And they're like, okay. And they just quickly slap something together. I think people, I hopefully we never get to a situation where China actually has to flex its military might, because I think a lot of people will quickly become very, very upset and embarrassed yeah. about what has transpired. I think so. I mean, we see it in every sector, all the way up to the top leadership of the government. Their corruption literally rots China to the core. Correct. That's how it, how China operates. Yeah, and it's it's a, just a terrible situation because at the at the end of the day, like maybe the central planners actually have a good idea, yeah, of course, and they of course. actually do want to do something good. Yeah. But the way it all works with the top down thing is there's just no accountability. It's no. just such a mess. It's always passed down the the rungs of the ladder. You see how this stuff works. Yeah, we exactly. lived there over a decade. Or... Yeah. Anyway, so we just wanted to point that out let's keep an eye on china's fancy cracked um aircraft carrier the fujian and see what happens to it so um Ooh. yeah <laughs> maybe maybe you can explain what's going on in this photo well we got got some kids going to school in china mm. but one kid has been singled out um by some staff that the staff looks like he might be a little concerned about the the boy's choice of attire yeah. uh, going to school because he is in an in Japanese imperial military uniform. Correct. Uh, the same uniform that was used against China mm. during the war. Now, I think what's happening here is this boy is not, in fact, cosplaying, but probably dressing up for some sort of play where he's going to get absolutely. Bayon bayoneted anyway. Yeah, he absolutely <laughs> is dressing up for a school uh, function and because we've seen this ourselves. I was yeah. quite shocked when I, I used to uh, teach kindergarten because in China, I, I started my first job was teaching kindergarten. Yeah. Then I moved up to high school students, then, you know, business and, you know, went up from there. But in kindergarten, they would quite often have these little plays mm -hmm. where they would dress some of the, the students up as Japanese soldiers. And then the other students, little, student, little, little, little ghosts, and I'm talking about like five year olds here, yeah. dress them up as little, little Japanese soldiers. And then the uh, other side would kill them. And I'm like, these are little kids. And everyone's like, oh, how cute. <laughs> yeah, how exactly. Then they would like shoot them or, you know, pretend to shoot them. They would be like, ah, and all that stuff. Yeah. And then I went to, you know, Tencent. Yeah. I wanted to make WeChat, QQ, mm -hmm. all this, you know, the, the big, huge, like the Google of China, basically. Um, I went to Tencent and they had this massive year-end function where they had um, Wang Feng, you know, the, yeah. the rock star mm -hmm. was singing there. And so celebrities turning up, all this. And they put on a play in the middle of the whole thing, which I filmed, and I've so lost the footage. Gunga. Yeah, that yeah. guy, yeah. So they put a play in the middle with like some of the Tencent engineers or whatever dressed up as soldiers, and came and they like, got shot, and they're all dying and raising the Chinese flag. I was like, what the <laughs> hell is going on here? <laughs> in the it's company like, performance. This is a, like the company year yeah. in massive with like big stars, rock stars, and everything, and they have a big thing, and it was in a stadium. Like, you know, tens of thousands of people in there. Yeah. And it's like they're killing Japanese and stuff. I'm like, this is so pathetic, you know? Anyway, so... You go to Google's year-end function. It's not about diversity and inclusivity and pronouns this No, no, I mean, no, they're no. just like, I don't know. It's like, they, they're like, no, none of that this year. Today, we're going to kill the Japanese and yeah, Germans. Yeah, exactly. And they put on a play. <laughs> exactly. And they dress them up like racial stereotypes. Yes, yes. You know? Yes. Anyway, so this guy's obviously uh, um, going to school to do one of those plays, and it looks like the... The Bang Jiang, as you say, the sort of class yeah. monitor type dude's like, uh, yeah, maybe not. <laughs> he's, he's not gonna. Yeah, yeah, it's just kind of an interesting picture. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta see what you know. You know Transformers, right? Yes. So you know Wolf Warrior Diplomacy as well. Yes. This, is, if you don't know, it's the idea that China decided instead of being diplomatic, they'll be mean yes. on the world stage and just be like, no, you, yeah, man. Just Undiplomatic is yeah. the best way to. Oh, so, yeah. Well, the final form of wolf warrior diplomacy is actually this. It transforms into this, apparently. And it was actually weirdly found in Taiwan. Uh, I was looking at some claw machines in Taiwan, and behold, the wolf warrior's true form. That's so kind is, of funny to see. Yeah, I love that that was found in a claw machine. Hopefully yeah. not with children yeah. around. Anyway, like what we were talking about, this clip has been going around recently. And you can see the children go on these like school trips. Now, when I was young... You go to a school trip, you go to like, I don't know, botanical garden or something, right? Or you go to yeah. the woods and you learn about yeah. nature or yeah. something, right? In China... We went to the morgue. Oh, you did? Mm. Hmm. No, I've never been to a morgue. Got a Snickers bar. From the morgue. Yeah. That's rather bizarre. You should tell that story sometime. <laughs> yeah. um, in China, when you go on a school trip, you can go stab <laughs> Japanese people. Yeah. It's bayonet. Oh, no, it's good. I thought it was yeah. too loud. It's not too loud. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh,
Yeah, you can drive. That's kind of cool. That's pretty sick. Um, this is actually a precedent that's being set, though. You yeah. can say whatever you want to, you know, think about this. It's actually much, much deeper than this one clip, and I'm going into oh, it yes. next week. Yeah, you, you have a whole bunch of clips for next week. But it is ramping. China's ramping up massively right now to prepare children for war. Yeah. At least psychologically. The thing is, this bayonet stabbing thing was happening uh, back in 2007. Oh, yeah. Was, yeah. I, you saw, know, I, I saw it in 2007 when I was teaching kindergarten. This I is took the kind my of thing kids to, uh, Yeah, I took my kids to that uh, aircraft carrier thing in Shenzhen. And mm. there was a whole thing. You could pay like 50 yuan or whatever and stab American soldiers. They were not Japanese. They were yeah, Americans. they're American. Okay. Yeah. Big it's, nose Americans. You know, that it's sloppy like, stereotype. Yeah, but like why? Why teach hate? You know what I mean? Oh, it's part, it's part just, and parcel part of uh, authoritarian governments yeah i know i know it's, it's a rhetorical question or whatever like yeah. i know why but it's just uh for most people in the developed world we don't understand this no okay no. because to us we're taught you know kids are supposed to have fun learn. yeah not only about fun but we also taught tolerance yes and peace this is just pure hatred and yeah. and uh racism yeah. and you know singling out a nation mm -hmm. a person you know based on their nationality as an object of hatred to stab yeah. with a bayonet it's yeah. It's um, it's something that you have to understand, and it's not excusable. Yeah. You can't excuse this no. in any way, shape, or form. You could say, oh, the atrocities the Japanese did in the past. Yes, we all know that. You don't teach it's, that to seven-year-olds. Yeah, you don't need to teach a five-year-old to kill someone. No. They you take seven-year-olds, and the reason I bring that up is that they take them at that age to mm -hmm. go see a, a war atrocities that the Japanese committed on people. They look at skinned people. They look oh, at yeah. dead babies. They mm -hmm. look at, like, just the most vile things you can picture. Yeah. They take seven and eight year olds around that age to go look at those things. Yeah, it's awful. And I went to the museum that they went to, mm. um, and they have these museums around. Sure. And it's like, what? I mean, I get that that's part of history, and we learn about atrocities. We learn about the Holocaust. Yeah, we learn about the Holocaust. We learn about, about what happened in the mm. Soviet Union. We learn about the Nazis. We learn about uh, China, Mao, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But we learn about that stuff when we're in our teen years, right? Not when yeah. we're seven or eight and being taught, you must hate this race of people. That's what they're taught. Yeah. You know? We're not given a rifle with a bayonet and told to stab a Nazi. Yes, correct. You know? right. It just doesn't work that way. No. Yeah, it's an, it's an unfortunate situation, uh, especially since there's no real clear delineation between the past and the present. That's the problem. Because, yeah, you can say Nazi all you want, yeah, but they also are taught to hate modern day Japan. Yeah, they're just taught to hate Japanese people. Yeah. It's not about like hate Nazi Germany. We we always hear that right. phrase, Nazi Germany. That means Germany when it was separate, right? When it was under the leadership of the Nazis, not yeah, Germany. Not now. Yeah, we don't say hate Germany. We say we get taught to, you know, um, hate Nazi Germany. In the Correct. movies and all that kind of thing. Right. Anyway, um, just just to show that uh, something that's going on in China. Yeah, full coverage coming this week. Yeah, um, not just about this clip, there's lots, yes, lots of evidence coming out. Right now. Yeah, it's pretty disturbing. Yeah. So, do we have something lighthearted oh. to follow that up? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. But this this is a, this is soft power hour. So let's move yes. on, guys. Okay, we're gonna move on to soft power hour. Oh, not what's new. Soft power hour. Sorry, where we tell you how China is trying to change your mind through so many different ways. Now, today we're just gonna stop by showing you this clip over here. Okay, let's take a quick look. Here it comes. Stop it. Right. Okay. Chakalaka. All right, when it goes hey, black. You can pause it there. Pause okay. It. Pause it mid. I'll pause it when break. he's when he's in a in a very interesting position. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's a limber guy, though. I'll tell you what. I would have been in serious shit if this. Oh happened yeah, no, that's that's crazy. So what this is all about is, according to the people of the, that have been sharing this, the, the Chinese people that have been sharing this, is that this particular type of shared bike, when your money, your credits run out, because when you you kind of prepay to use it, when your credits run out, the brakes automatically lock to prevent theft. Yeah. Because these are AI bikes. These are not the simple ones. <laughs> yeah. You know? I'm not joking. Yeah. Can I say something real quick? Sure. There are so many things in China being called AI right now because it's part of this AI initiative. And what we suspect is that 
there's stats that they're making within yes. the country. So if they get enough things labeled, officially labeled legally as AI, they can use that and be like, China's the leader. If You probably hear this all the time. Yeah. China's the world leader in AI technology of this and that and this and that. Look at these graphs. China has tripled its AI yeah, it's like Yeah, AI, you know, imp- implementation of AI. And they'll yes. have like a big graph. But, but that's... it's freaking Rubik's Cubes yeah, and like yeah. yo-yos and shit. Yeah, it'll say AI on yeah. the package. And it's the government stamp. Yeah. So you can start to see, wait a minute, just like everything else in China that we've tried to been telling you over the past, like, how many years we've been doing this yeah, YouTube yeah. stuff, that it's just not real. Absolutely, like this this whole thing. Yes, young girl and beautiful. That is not AI. Hey, that's so, cute. so, yeah, just just so you guys know. No, let's, let's examine let's, this more. So, um, so the idea is that, mm-hmm. um, originally... The shared bike system was that you use your phone. And mm-hmm. this is the thing that China keeps proclaiming they've invented. It's like, did you know? I actually, someone the other day, yeah, right? I was talking to someone the other day, and they go, it was China came up in the conversation because they used to live there, right? And uh, they go, did you know that like China's like cashless or something? Like people don't really use cash. And I said, hold up. I said, when's the last time you used cash? And he's like, oh, it's been a while, actually. And I said, okay. Would you say that you need to bring cash anywhere you go around America? And he's like, oh, actually, not really. And I was like, what do you use? And he's like, oh, Apple. I use Apple Pay. And then if I can't use Apple Pay, I just use my credit card. And I was like, well, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> it's this propaganda. It this, is. You know. It's, you know, so many m- videos and stuff on YouTube about China's cashless society. That's so what? And, you know, we fell for that too in a row. We did. There. We're just like, we oh, did. look, you can pay th- with things fr- on your phone. Right. But actually, uh, countries like America have been cashless long before they started all of that when i was in china i was still using cash quite often yeah i couldn't use credit cards Mm -hmm. no you can't use credit cards but you can use wechat pay now pretty much anywhere yes still this whole idea that they uh revolutionize that's not really true yeah and let's centralize everything into a very vulnerable Mm. app on your phone so anyway um china did push this whole narrative that the shared bike system is one of the four new inventions that china's made what are the old inventions Oh, it was like gunpowder, uh, compass, yeah, paper, and uh, what was the other one? This is the Chinese government claims that gunpowder, paper, the compass, and what was the fourth? Oh, printing old? press. Printing press were yeah. all invented in China, right? Yeah. That's debatable. It's debatable because there's records of like you know Egyptians made similar things at the same time. Yeah. So it's like right. whatever you can give them that if you want. Sure. <laughs> um, Khmer Rouge had a cashless society. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, that's pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so um. The thing is, they created this, this bike sharing fiasco because that's what it is. We're going to look at some footage here. Yeah, but actually, hold on. Okay. You'll see here. I actually, this guy had massive warning sign. Okay. That this was about to happen. Oh, do I and rewind? I, well, no, no, no. Leave okay. It. Because okay. what I did was I enhanced the audio okay. so that you can actually hear. He was warned a couple, at least a couple seconds before this whole crash happened. Okay, let's Just see. Listen carefully. Let's see. You can see him. He's like, what's. Okay, ready? You can see, right? He was warned. Did you see that? Yeah. You could hear it quite clearly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, that was the AI kicking in. Yeah, the AI was kicking in there. And, uh, you know, at least they built in a warning system that that was going to happen. Now, what I'm showing you behind here, guys, is some footage that was taken in uh, 2018. Yeah. Um, we've got a link in the description below to the original um, clip that I got this from. Yeah. And what you're seeing here are some of the shared bike graveyards. Okay. Yes. So we have to talk about shared bikes. We've shown that this AI shared bike locks you when you run out of your thing. I've done videos about uh, the shared bikes yes. on my channel before. But this guy's got fantastic footage. Let's take a look at, uh, look at it over here. You see, what happened was um, this idea of shared bikes of course is not a chinese idea it's been around before in uh holland what are you talking about it's one of the four new inventions yeah yeah, exactly but (laughs) it has been around for a long time but with the advent of technologies like gps and stuff built into these uh you know these bikes because they have like a little locking mechanism which also has a gps tracker in it okay and so what happens is you use an app on your phone you unlock it you pay for it and then you can go cycle around when you stop and lock it it deducts the money of however much you've ridden yeah okay this was a massive cash grab because all of a sudden these companies could get a huge amount of investment everybody saw it as a big investment opportunity and the government pushed it because it was like this is our new and but when the government stamps official this is our china new invention 
Yeah. Then it gets so much national attention. Yeah, it's crazy. So, of course, all these shysters came out of nowhere in these factories, and they just they would create a new bike sharing company. I think there were seventy. They made it. They they came up eventually. There were seventy of these companies. Yeah. Okay. And then all they did was get investment money, billions and billions and billions of RMB. Yeah. And then they just pump these bikes out. They started making them in factories, and then they just go dump them out on the streets. Yep. And then people would pay you, like, pay a deposit to get your account, like 200 RMB, I remember, is what you pay to open an account to use these things. And then a lot of them basically just took the money and ran, including all the deposits from the people and all the investment money. But look at the scale of these bikes. Can you see these ridiculous piles? I mean, these in, are mountains. By the way, in months? In months. Yes. Just two of the companies made 20 million of these. Yeah, I did, yeah, 20 million. I think there were 70 million plus that were made. Yeah. So now the thing is, because this was just a cash grab opportunity, look at that mountain. Can you see that? Those That's are a mountain of bicycles in one city. Yeah. Um, they were starting to, for lack of a better word, pollute the streets. And that's when I started to make videos about them back then because, uh, in, in fact, around about this time frame, 2017, 2018, I made some videos about this because they were a nuisance. Yeah. They were getting in your way. Yeah. You couldn't go anywhere You're without... Walking the road. Yeah. And they would put them like at the entrance of subways and stuff. And so yeah. you'd come out and you could have to like climb over them. Yeah. So it got to a point, and the reason why you're seeing these graveyards is it got to a point where the government's who at first were encouraging it because, of course, it's a good um, g generation of uh, economy, yeah. right? Of course, it just looks like, you know, you're making things, you're selling things, you're building things, you're, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, they were encouraging it. But then when it became a nuisance where you couldn't even walk on the sidewalk anymore, uh, they were like, okay, listen, this is getting out of hand. And they told the bike companies, um, you may not put too many bikes on the streets. But they'd already just created so many of them. So what would happen is... When too many bikes got in an area, the company would have to come in little trucks, pick them up and go and dump them in like a designated area. That's what you're seeing here, these bike graveyards. Yeah. Uh, so bear in mind, even though these things are packed, right? I like how Wuhan looks like San Francisco there, by the way. <laughs> yeah, copy everything. Yeah. yeah. Um, they would dump them, but bear in mind, even with these massive graveyards, the, the streets are still crowded. Look at the scale yeah. of this. And this is something that people don't understand. China overdoes things. When there's money to be made, they don't give a shit about the environment. They don't give a shit about whether it's viable or not. They just go full blast into this. So Because of the government initiatives. Yes. When the government signs off on something, everyone says, well, finally, this, this government that has a boot on our face all the time. Yeah. Lifts it off and goes, okay, now you can go start a company and, then and make money. they take the piss. They and take they're the like, piss. okay, let's do it, right? Yeah. And the government has no oversight over this because yeah. they're like, well, this is good for us because yeah. we, we're going to be good for the a ecosystem, right? Yeah, exactly. This was all done in an effort to promote China's eco-friendly image. Yes. And under Xi Jinping, he's really tried to promote this idea that China is the, you know, the forefather of like going forward in the new, new development of uh, green technology. Yes. This was part of that. And yes. I want people to understand the stats that you see. This stuff is going into those stats. Yes. Look at how many non-carbon using vehicles have been. Yes. Made, right. All this shit that when you, like you were saying, when they say, look at China's renewable green yeah. tech, yeah. they're counting these dumb bikes as part of that. Yeah. Like you said, there'll be like so many millions of vehicles, ecologically friendly vehicles. But let me ask you this. Anyone who knows anything about production, what kind of uh, destruction to the environment will you see by creating all these bikes? If you look at the mountains of these bikes, how much carbon mm. was wasted in the production? How yeah. much heat of this earth was generated? How yeah. much rubber was harvested? How yes. much metal was wasted? S smelting of the metals, you know, molding of the, the, the metals. There's all also the... computer chips in there. Yeah, of course. There's... Every single one of these bikes is just a huge amount of waste. Because yes. you see, they just turn into piles of garbage. Right. And these graveyards, they'll never be used again. No. They're not, and they don't sell them to third world countries or anything. And you they have... just end up being piles of shit that get kind of crushed or whatever. Yeah, and I think people have to understand it's not, there's no uh, Western system of recycling in China. Yeah. There are so many corners cut when recycling. Mm. I mean, remember that I always bring this stuff. up, but like the whole... 
electronics recycling facility where I watched American electronics being shipped to Guangdong in China. Yeah. And instead of recycling them, what they're doing is burning them. And there's black pillars yeah. of smoke coming up from these buildings that are supposed to be dismantling and recycling stuff, and they're just burning them. Yeah. And so there's no real infrastructure for that. Like you can pretend like China's just melting this stuff down and actually creating new good things with it, but that's just not the case. No, it's just a wasteful uh, exercise here. And this stupid shared bike thing um, has caused such a huge amount of damage to the environment. Um, yeah. And, you know, I hate it when I see people using these kind of things as an example of, look how China is, no. uh, you know, helping the earth with renewable technology and stuff. They're not. Um, everything that goes into these big mega projects China does, like these big solar farms you see and, you know, the, the replanting of deserts and all that, it's always a big, wasteful, not very well planned thing. Okay, and it's great for PR. It's great for all these shills that go out there and say, like, look at all the renewable energy. But in reality, it's detrimental to the environment. It's not just great for the shills and stuff. It's great for these people, these Westerners that are so that still apologize for China and still think that there's something to be had with China mm. and, and invest in the screen technology because they've been had. Yeah, they have. They have made their entire portfolios reliant on China. And that's that's what the divorce the, the West is trying to divorce itself from right now. Yeah. You've created this monster. Yeah. Because you have funded this stuff. You've funded all of these projects. You've been duped and tricked by the Chinese government for how long? Yeah. And now they can't get away. It's almost a parasitic relationship, right? Yes. Yes. So we're stuck in this situation now. Where as funny as it was that, you know, like the the whole guy falling off the bike and everything. Poor guy, by the way. Yeah. Um he looked pretty tough. I think he's okay. I think he's he's fine. It's yeah. a greater it's a greater analogy. Can you put a big mountain of yeah, bikes? Yeah, I'm trying to find that that one in Xi'an. A giant know. mountain. Give me a giant mountain of bikes because I want to I want to uh, bring it back to reality here and like what we're yeah. currently dealing. I'm with. Just trying to find the Xi'an uh, pile. Just have some the Xi'an pile of doom. Anyway, yeah, yeah. I'll pause it when it gets there. Sure. So I want people to to not just look at this from a waste perspective. Don't just look at this from a perspective of oh, that was a lot of like tens of millions of bikes that were abandoned, and this is a stupid project that the government shouldn't have, shouldn't have endorsed, and it's over. It's not over. It continues no. today. Let's look at the size of that. Right. I've seen pictures. Oh, sorry, in Xiamen, not Xi'an. This is in Xiamen. Um, I saw one that was double this size. Yeah, yeah, the, the huge one. That huge, one. Yeah, you know that the, one? Yeah. It was insane. It was literally like, it looked like you're staring at Mount Everest or something. Yeah, Mount, yeah. I know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Insert bike jam. Yeah, you insert a <laughs> bike pedals. brand, you know what I, I mean? Know, yeah. yeah, giant. <laughs> yeah, it was giant. Yeah, it was giant, yeah, it was. <laughs> anyway, yeah. look yeah, at that. Real mountain bikes, it was you know a what I mean? Mountain <laughs> bike. Imagine yeah. mountain biking down this yeah. mountain. You, you, be meta. You would just get like, what? what's that thing you get when you scratch yourself and run like rusty tetanus. steel tetanus you just you, get tetanus just leave it there okay yeah that's i want to I hone in on that okay yeah or I'll, that doesn't matter no I'll, anyway. go, I'll go to the previous one it's kind of an epic shot i want tetanus you mountain yes i want you to think about this yeah. how did this transpire well mm -hmm. in a in a you know an authoritarian government like china what they said was we are going to be at the forefront of this carbonless kind of green technology and we're going to be the the pioneers of shared bikes not yes. only did they claim they invented it yes but they continued to go on and market it to the world like look at what good we've done whereas you've done nothing mm. right and it, like you said it's good pr right mm. this part's what they want to cover up right the yes. actual aftermath of this the, the fact that it was a massive genuine failure a genuine colossal failure yes and i want you to look at some other industries where china is claiming to be the leader again the ai thing is not a joke the AI thing being attributed to all this stuff is the exact same thing. The mm. billions of billions of dollars pouring into China right now because they're at the forefront of AI and they're way ahead of America and AI and all this stuff is shared bikes. Mm. It's exactly the same thing. Yeah. They have not proven to have innovated or made anything yet. Yet mm. the money keeps pouring in and the propaganda keeps you know, covering People keep the entire world. The whole, you know... Tons of foreign investment went into this shit too, you know? It's not just... That's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's like it's foreign investment. You know, you see these big solar farms. Yeah. You don't hear about the fact that what they did was have to destroy agricultural land to put them there. You yeah. know, the viable sites. A lot of them, they destroyed proper arable land. You can't plant things under the solar cells. Oh, and remember some of the solar cells don't work. They yes. don't even plug them in. No, and it's also the, the process of creating them is incredibly destructive to the environment too. Yes. All the coal that's being burned to manufacture <laughs> the this The irony. Shit, 
Um, if and, China was actually yeah. going green, they wouldn't have added a triple, almost tripled their output of coal at this point. Yeah. In modern times. In now, modern times. They're yeah. doing it more, right? Adding on more coal plants. Yeah. Dirty coal as well. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, another example I want you to kind of just wrap your head around here. It's not just this AI thing, right? It's mm. chips as well. What China's been so utterly damaged by the, the chip sanctions, yes. right? Because they can't make their own chips, right? They yeah. need to use other countries' chips to get ahead in this techno war that the you know the whole the whole world's in right now. Yeah. Trying to get ahead, right? We're gonna cover this later, but we, you know they they apparently had developed their own chip, and what they had ended up doing is just taking an Intel i3, an old an old yeah. one, and then just literally writing new words on it. I'm sure you noticed, by the way, in all of this footage when it shows the cities, how awfully polluted they are. Yeah, and utterly yeah. polluted. So you know this whole green technology massive thing, it's not working. No. It's no. not. It's actually detrimental in many aspects. Whether it's AI mm. or chips or bricks, which we'll talk about later, it's nothing but propaganda and waste and failure over yeah. and over again. And we've wanted to be proven wrong, but it's just not the case. No, you no, know? it's not. And I don't know why people are still buying into this. Yeah, yeah, they are. And they're just throwing money at it all the time. Oh, China's the next big investment. Invest in green technology. This is what you're investing in, guys. Right. Wasteful destruction of the earth. You know, for lack of a better, uh, <laughs> you know, phrase. Anyway, we're going to move on from the uh, shared bike AI um, we situation. We killed this city. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we killed this city with shared bikes. Mm. Um, we're going to go back in history a little bit here. Let's skip sure. past this. Remember, if you want to see the this footage, there's a link below. And he also has another video. This, by the way, went viral in China, The, the this particular yeah. video. Yeah. Um, and it... Uh, it really raised a lot of questions. Tell you what, it wouldn't be allowed now. No, I'm pretty if sure this it's was been released scrubbed. today. It would, it would have been yeah. Scrubbed. 2018 is when this went viral, um, and that was the time like the height of this craze. Yeah, this shared bike nonsense. There's which, other crazes though. Yeah, they've got like related. shared cars. They yeah. did for a little bit. That's also failed. And in fact, on the same channel, there is another video. There are only two videos on the channel. It's linked in the description. You yeah, can see a little bit about the shared cars as well. Uh, anyway, let's go back in time because now. We got to talk about some old timey World War II stuff. I wish I could do a transatlantic exit. I can't. Here we are, looking at the ship. I don't know the name of the ship. Yeah, this one is like the uh, <laughs> the the. So I wanted to say Prince Albert, but it's definitely <laughs> Prince <laughs> Albert. <laughs> no, it's not. I'll it's tell you now. Prince Albert. Um, okay, let's get this out of the way. Um, <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> The Dude. Prince of Wales. Prince, of, the Prince of Wales. Here we're looking today at the ship, and also the um, the repulse. <laughs> Disgusting. The repulse. Okay. Why is it repulse? So I mean, to to really bastardize history here, yeah. I'm going to give you a little bit of a recap. Okay. So Winston Churchill, so Winston Churchill, Prime Minister of the UK during World War II, sent uh, two capital ships just off the coast of Singapore as a deterrent for the Japanese expansion forces. So right at that point in time, things were really heating up in that area of the world in the yeah. Pacific, right? You've got uh, Pearl Harbor, okay? We all know about Pearl Harbor. We do. Well, this inc incident happened a day or, well, two days, depending on your time zone, uh, a day after, two days after the Pearl Harbor attack, okay? And the whole idea of, uh, Winston Churchill sending these two capital ships and a couple other ones was to stop the expansion of Japan to take over Singapore and Malaysia and all that stuff, right? Helping so, out Asia. Yeah, basically there to try and prevent and deter the advancement of the Japanese forces. It didn't work, okay? Because, well, not only did the Japanese uh, inv invade Pearl Harbor and create a huge amount of destruction, but they also sent in their torpedo bombers, and they didn't realize that uh, Japan had pretty advanced torpedo bombers, Oof. which could really strike the ships from a long range, and sunk these two very big battleships. Oh, man. Just uh, there off Epic the coast. L. Yeah, it's in Malaysia, right? So it was, a, it was a big battle, and I've actually got a quote here um, of what um, Winston Churchill said, because he was called the next morning... Um, let me see, by, 
Okay, here we, we actually have a uh, newspaper article of the Prince of Wales. Heavy attacks on the Philippines. Yes. Boat bombed by the Japanese. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> there were a lot of articles out there that said, like, Jap bombers. <laughs> of, and course I was like, they, yeah. of course they use slurs. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so <laughs> I decided good. to leave those out and just say it myself so I can get into trouble. <laughs> um, anyway, so this is the Churchill cl- quote. <clears throat> the morning after the battle, this is the battle that sunk these two. Prime Minister Winston Churchill received a phone call at his bedside from Sir Dudley Pound, the first <laughs> sea lord. <laughs> I'm okay. Sorry. Yeah. What is a Dudley Pound and what is a sea lord? Well, I mean, his name is Sir Dudley Pound. Sir Dudley Pound, the first sea lord of yes. the U- UK Royal Navy. Yeah, so what do you do for a living? I am the first sea lord. lord. I'm the sea lord, lord is of the a, sea, am I? Is a video game? He's like got a triton. He's like, yeah, you know, yeah. He's like king, king, king Triton. Anyway, yeah. first sea lord. <clears throat> so this is what Pound said. <laughs> He said, Prime Minister, I have to report to you that the Prince of Wales and the Repulse have both been sunk by the Japanese. We think by aircraft. Tom Phillips is drowned. And Churchill replied, are you sure it's true? And Pound said, there's no doubt at all. So Churchill hung up and uh, he said, in all the war, I never received a more direct shock. As I turned over and twisted in bed, the full horror of the news sank in upon me. There were no British or American ships in the Indian Ocean or the Pacific, except the American survivors of Pearl Harbor, who were hastening back to California. Across this vast expanse of waters, Japan was supreme, and we everywhere were weak and naked. All right? Ouch. So this was a big deal. Right. Okay, this was a huge deal. You have to understand, this was a really big deal. Um, so... Now, both of the wrecks that were sunk, and there's the quote of Winston Churchill. I probably should have had that up there when I was reading that. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, yeah. you prepare things. Yes. doesn't mean yes. you're going to use it, right? It's <laughs> right. like those preppers that keep throwing away huge pantries of tin food because they <laughs> go off. Drinking, yeah, anyway. <laughs> so, um, of course, these are very revered. Here's a memorial to them, which is in England in um, it's a little place somewhere. Sure. Um, and it says the HMS Repulse and HMS Prince of Wales, 10th of December, 1941, 840 sailors were lost, 513 in HMS Repulse and uh, 327 in HMS Prince of Wales. This memorial is dedicated to the memory of all those who served. Many survivors of this battle died as Japanese prisoners of war. May their courage, dedication, and sacrifice never be forgotten. So some people were captured by the Japanese. You see, what happened was the survivors were then taken to Singapore. Oh, where they had conquered. And basically. no, and then like uh, shortly afterwards, the Japanese actually conquered Singapore. That's what I mean. Yeah, and then yeah. They, they captured 130,000 British prisoners of war from there. Makes sense. And we all know that... 130,000? Yeah. What? Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. That doesn't make sense. What? Look it up. That's No, I believe you, but that's like a ridiculous number. Well, I mean, think about it, it as a colony, a British colony. So you, right. you've got all the British there. True. So it's probably True. like the entire population of British Shooting people. Shooting fish in the barrel. I mean, there they are. They're like, oh, well, hey, you know, pris- yeah. prisoners of war now. Yeah. And, you know, it's an, un- it's an unfortunate situation, but uh, Japanese prisoners of war, and I mean prisoners of war that were captured yikes. by the Japanese were treated terribly. That is some yikes history if you want to look that stuff up. And, you know, I think it boils down to the whole attitude of, you know, um, especially during that time, if a Japanese soldier was captured, they would commit suicide. Yeah, seppuku. Yeah, and they they treated people that did not have the honor to commit suicide when captured as less, like, worthy uh, um, of being alive, like like dogs, really. I, I also, I used to, I think this is a bit whitewashed, but a lot of people would say, like, oh, it's because they had that honor that they wanted to give the prisoners of war that same honor. No, 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 no. And it I, was like, hey, you're not, you're, an, it's you're a piece opposite. of dirt. You, it's like, you you have, you have no honor. You're yes. not even a human being. Yes. Treat them worse than a dog. Right. And that, I'm pretty sure, is what happened. Anyway, it says here, those who go down to the sea in, yeah, those that go down to the sea in great ships see the works of the Lord and the wonders of the deep. Oh, that's a very optimistic way of looking at this. Well, you know, you got to try and make the families yes, feel better. You know? Anyway, the thing is, um, these uh, two wrecks, which yes. are identified, everybody knows where they are, um, they are treated as war graves. As okay? they should be. What you're seeing here are some um, buoys. How do you say that? Boy, a buoy? 
Bowie. A Bowie? Yeah. David Bowie? Yeah. yeah. No, that's I mean, David Bowie. I know. Yeah. But anyway, these boys are attached. That's not him. Bowies. In this photo, I'm pretty sure. I mean, eyesight's not great, but I don't think that's David Bowie. <laughs> no, probably not. <laughs> um, divers go... Some sort of Rorschach yeah. test. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> divers go down um, occasionally and attach the British naval flags to the to wrecks the as yeah. a, you know, out of respect for the dead. Yeah. And this has been a tradition that's been going on for, you know, many, many, many years and as I you see. can see this is the the, the cool. repulse the previous one is such a bad Blair. name for a ship yeah well they Repulsive. have well they have interesting names like the one of them was called the vampire and, oh that's you sick. know there was another one the hms terror is the one that got stuck up in the ice where all the sailors went mad from the lead uh, in the it's a cool name yeah probably unlucky name yeah it's yeah. pretty unlucky anyway name. so uh Anyway, so this is something, the reason I'm showing you all of this stuff is to show you that this is the location of the two, by the way, um, the two wrecks. And the reason I'm telling you all of this is that these are actually revered war graves and they are, you know, uh, what is it? They're property of the crown. And there's the the whole like international agreements about, you know, like this is a... You don't touch it. This is a a war grave. Yeah. You wouldn't... Yeah, exactly. It's like a historical site. Sure. China doesn't care. They sent a dredger up there to go and dredge up the steel and destroy the wrecks to steal all the the shipwreck steel. Just <laughs> recently, right? Yeah. Like the other day. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So they went to go find a royal property with international agreements mm-hmm. as being designated as a royal, royal grave. Yes. And then cut grave up robbery. This, cut up the steel. To reprocess. Yeah, it. let me read. Uh, let me read over here. So, <clears throat> a Chinese salvage ship has been caught red-handed looting the war graves of 840 men, ripping up the World War II wrecks of the battleship HMS Prince of Wales and the battle cruiser HMS Repulse for high-quality steel. Malaysian now media. That's repulsive. That is repulsive. Yeah. Yeah. Ma- <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Malaysian media and maritime open source intelligence analysts last week located a dredger sitting illegally over the designated war grave of the two British warships sunk by Japanese bombers in December 1941. Royal Malaysian police on Friday reportedly uncovered live ammunition, two British 5.25 inch anti aircraft cannons, a ship's anchor, and sections of hull at a jetty in Kota Tinggi. Johor. Okay. It's in Malaysia. Yeah. yeah. So um, basically they went down there. They've been dredging up, uh, you know, these war graves, looting them and taking the steel. There's a Looting reason. Over yeah, there. exactly. And then obviously offloading some over there. And, uh, you know, the local police found, you know, oh, okay. They're finding some of the things they've been picking up, like all the ammunition and stuff from there. So the Malaysian police cooperated in... Yeah, yeah, they okay. found they found some of the stuff on the jetty there because obviously the silver ship is oh gets overloaded, goes and offloads some things which will then get like I don't know, oh, taken care I of from there, and then they yeah. go out to get more that type of thing. Oh, anyway, oh my <clears throat> gosh, the steel used in the era's warships were of exceptionally high quality and represents a quick and easy source of scrap to be smelted into new products. Um, and this is something very interesting that I didn't know. The steel? Yeah. yeah I learned is about Is that this the well. steel in these era of... Sh- any ship that was sunk before, like, the nuclear test... Pre-1940. Yeah, 1940, the, the nuclear test. Although this was sunk in 1941. So. No, but it's about when the when it was yeah. made. Oh, right, yeah. right, 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 yeah. Not when it was sunk. It sure. doesn't matter when it was sunk. Anyway, the fact of the matter is, um, when the uh, first atomic <laughs> sure. uh, tests with the atomic bombs happened, uh, nuclear isotopes went up into the air yeah. and apparently uh, affected all steel. So, yeah. yeah, if you... All steel has like a small, minute amount of radiation, and that really messes with very precise scientific instruments. Yeah, it's kind of why I'm not what I used to be, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So this steel is very useful for very precise uh, scientific in, uh, yeah. instruments, and that's why it's so sought after. It's any, like gold. Yeah, any like high quality steel from before the first nuclear bomb yeah. tests is actually sought after. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Let's go cut up some ships, said China. Yeah, let's. What are you doing? Let's go steal some graves. What? Anyway, are you doing? let's rob some graves. Um, okay, here's the thing: the salvage ship Chuan Hong. That's what it's called, Chuan Hong, which means. Red ship red yeah red, red boat ship. i guess red boat 68 which oh, belongs good old red boat 68 yeah red boat 68 which belongs to the chinese firm fujian ya Rei marine uh, has been observed operating in malaysian waters since early this year I, um, they're only one away from being nice <laughs> yeah exactly but it's not the first time the chinese registered salvage ship has been caught looting war graves it was the, a real steal yeah <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. Stealing steel. The Chuang Hong 68 and its crew were temporarily detained in 2017 amid allegations it had removed three Japanese World War II wrecks <laughs> near stopped. Yeah, Usukan, Malaysia. And the Indonesian Navy had reportedly intercepted the ship in April of the same year, where it was scavenging a shipwreck near uh, Anama, Anambas Island. It allegedly, okay. it allegedly fled to international waters. Uh, okay. Okay, so it was also allegedly responsible for illegally scavenging the wrecks of pre-World War II Japanese destroyer Sagiri, plus the passenger ves vessels Hiyoshi Maru and uh, Katori Maru, the steamship Igara, and the tanker Seven Skies. Mm -hmm. yep. um, so it's been, it's been around it's that area. It's a thing. This, this stupid ship, this one ship, is like a grave robbing ship and it's, stay with us guys yeah. we're not reading the news the whole time promise. yeah exactly uh anyway the fact of the matter is uh not only is the high quality steel good but the bronze propellers and the boilers it's and things stuff. yeah it's a great source of high quality metal it's like a yard sale to them right and there's i mean it's it's absolutely dis disgusting obviously but you also have to understand why um a chinese ship would do this kind of thing why do you think they would be okay with just going and uh, robbing graves, well, historical sites? They have the Chinese fishing vessels have been given the okay by the central government mm -hmm. to go around the world and do whatever they want with impunity. Yes, and guess what? Nobody ever does anything about it. Yeah, they go to the Galapagos and kill they all the hammerhead killed, sharks and stuff. They have killed endangered species. They have dredged very sensitive areas. They have killed coral reefs. They have terrorized other countries' sovereign territory and their own ships, their own boats. Yeah. And no one ever does anything about it. And the Chinese government says, keep going. Keep going. Just turn off your transponder so no one sees you and just do it. Speaking of that, when I went to go look, there are plenty of websites where you can track ships, okay? Yes. It's like they've got transponders in them. But look at this. I went to, this is like a couple hours ago. Vessel is out of range, right? right? That means it's turned off its transponders. Here, it's like uh, this one as well. It's like we last observed the vessel in the South China Sea more than 12 hours ago. Right. These are websites that track ships. Oh. So what they're saying is they've turned off their transponder because they're obviously like escaping again because now this news has come out. So they're probably like, oop, we're out of here. Turn off all the transponders. Let's get back to uh, the safety of international waters. Well, let's go back to China so that we can't get into trouble. Um, anyway, the reason why this kind of thing can happen is that China has no respect for history. Modern China. Yeah, it's there's a reason for that. Yeah, Mao Zedong you know, the starter of the whole Communist Party basically said, we have to destroy the four olds. We have to yeah. destroy all the history of China. Fours. Yeah, there's always four. Four they inventions, four, yeah, four, four olds. olds. Yeah, exactly. Gang of four. Gang of four. There's always four. It's a lot of fours. Yeah. Anyway, so they went and destroyed temples and burnt manuscripts and pulled down statues and got rid of all the history and all that sort of thing. So China's for, history. Chi like China's own. actual history. So there's no real respect for history. No, it's, it's from, always seen as tacky or, you know, there's no real respect for old things. If you yeah. think about it, if you go around China, people have been taught that everything must be new. Yeah. If it's something old, it's like... Uh, if it's something like an old car or an old this or that, that's very recent that that stuff is kind of respected. Yeah. In traditional history, they're like, no, everything must be new. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's true. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of a disgusting thing that's that's uh, been happening right yeah. now. Yeah. We're we're gonna follow on with something else that's related to ships and marine stuff, and that is that China has just uh, Chinese scientists, as they say, um, have done a mock war game um, where they were basically testing hypersonic missile strikes on a US, a U.S. carrier group in the South China Sea. Yes. So they set up a simulation on how they could um, attack and completely destroy the U.S. carrier group if it had its biggest aircraft carrier in there and all that sort of thing. Yeah. They did very public, very publicly yeah. did this. So uh, military planners conclude the Gerald uh, R. Ford and its fleet could be destroyed with certainty in a rarely published report. Okay. Anyway, so the researchers said 24 hypersonic anti-ship missiles were used to sink the Navy's newest carrier and its group in 20 simulated battles. Uh, what do you what do you think this is all about? Like, I mean, we could sit here and read an article. Projection. We don't have to do that. But yeah, yeah, it is. Do we have a project? We do. Projection. He's not around anymore, sadly. Um, Anyway, this is a picture of the simulation. And um, I just, 
you know, I don't want to read articles, but there's some quote here that I want, I really want to read from this particular article. You are a quote boy today. Yes. Quote, quote Smith. Okay, so this is from their own, from their mouth, the mouth of the people that the did PLA? this. Okay, yes. Okay, so the, the team that did this. Okay. The, the plan. Um, yeah, exactly. So <clears throat> the team said two hypersonic anti-ship missile models with vastly different performances were unleashed in the simulation, mm -hmm. with some launched from as far away as the Gobi Desert. Okay. The Chinese military displayed unusual prowess in their sophisticated launch wait, strategy. Wait, wait. <laughs> yeah. You're not reading in a third party report. No, that's you're reading them, an internal report. That's what they're saying about themselves. <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah, so the, the <laughs> <laughs> Wait, it's like, it's, yeah, okay. The Chinese military displayed unusual prowess in their sophisticated launch strategy. Said itself. Yeah, said itself. <laughs> yeah. It said itself. Yeah. Um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's yeah. the most narcissistic shit I've ever heard in my I life. I know, it's ridiculous. It's like, oh, yeah, it's like you're saying, Ma Matthew is the ha most handsome man, <laughs> you know? Matthew won the handsomest man award during the Matthew Handsome Awards <laughs> exactly. of 2023. <laughs> Said himself. Yeah. You know, I think what's kind of funny is it's the Chinese government has repeatedly accused the U.S. of stoking tensions in the region, right? Yes. Um, what do you think this is? <laughs> this is is such, this stoking tensions? This is it's more like, like oh. stroking tensions. I mean, <laughs> stroking yourself off. Here's the thing. It's okay to do a you, like a mock battle. Like, yes. okay, we're going to pretend that we're attacked by an unknown enemy force yeah. that consists of a U.S. I mean, a, a, a Aircraft, aircraft carrier that looks like the, aircraft the, carrier, aircraft right. carrier, yeah, no, an aircraft carrier that looks like the Gerald Ford or whatever, sure. and a couple of ships that might look like they're from America. It's okay to do that, but to say this is the U.S. best aircraft carrier and its fleet, <laughs> and we've destroyed it. <laughs> the, we tried many times, we destroyed them completely. We have no proof that any of this transpired, by the way. But we're going to self-publish a report. And then yeah, tell we're going to say how well we did it. Success. Yeah, it was just like great prowess and sophistication. No, I don't want to, you know inhibit the military industrial complex's reaction to this because they'll probably be like see see now we need to be, you know yeah, exactly. we need to build more to combat this successful yeah america uh, look china's they're doing the hypersonic missile tests it's time for you to spend more on the u.s military That's let's ramp it up as if they needed more excuses no anyway. that was a good time let's <laughs> double down let's the, get a couple more fighter jets missiles are hot <laughs> yeah exactly so yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway uh, so no, I did want to say something about this. Though. And what do you it's, want to say? It's very, very in line, very, very in line mm -hmm. with China's tradition of blowing their load and the show and everybody. Yeah. Because they literally have constantly come out with something that doesn't exist, show yeah. it to the world. This is our sixth generation fighter. Yeah. It's like a 3D model from a video game. Yeah. And people are like, what are you talking about? Because somebody needs someone to say something to the world. They that's how China works. Brag all they the time. They have to brag and show. And that's why I'm never too concerned about China's actual military ambitions. They militarize islands. They break international agreements all the time. But when push comes to shove, again, it's a different story. I've seen mm. the U.S. kind of be like, oh, we're so behind, we're so behind. Meanwhile, they're like 10 years ahead of everyone, right? Russia is the same. I think the ex-Soviet mm -hmm. Union stuff and Russia in, in its current form is the same thing. Mm. I learned something interesting about the uh, hypersonic missiles. Yeah. Russia, actually, U.S. US media was going on about this too. Russia's got hypersonic missiles. We're unprepared for this kind of stuff, yeah. right? And it turns out that the hypersonic missiles were old tech, they barely have hypersonic capabilities. It's no, there's nothing new or groundbreaking about them, right? It was blessed. Yeah, they got shut down. Shut down, right? <clears throat> Apparently, China's hypersonic missiles are hypersonic capable, right? They do have that technology. But again, where's the proof of that, right? Where has that actually happened and transpired to mm. show people that that's the case? Because all I've seen is Sarai for yeah, this kind of stuff. Much, I'm not even know? joking. Yes, young girl and beautiful. What I see, Sarah, I know you guys are probably tired of her, but it's such a good analogy for pretty much everything in China's modern development. Because when they needed to show people their, their most future forward Huawei AI technology, they put a Thai woman in a booth, put the her microphone. on an unreal mapped, uh, mm -hmm. a, uh, unreal mapped polygon uh, avatar mm -hmm. and gave her a microphone. And that is what I've constantly seen over and over again, whether it's their aircraft carriers or they're blustering about their next generation of weapons. And well, fighters. look at the aircraft carrier. Remember yeah. the huge amount of bluster about, oh, it's got the ele ele electromagnetic ramps and it's amazing and it's next level and it's better than anything the world's ever seen. 
and it's just sitting yes. there with cracks on it. Yes. You know? Yes. It's one of those things. Anyway, let's so, continue. Let's move on to Wumao Corner, everyone. This is where we talk about the haters and uh, the, the nonsense that they get up to. <laughs> Uh, but before we get right into the, the crux of the matter here, um, so to speak, we have a little reminder of our show that we have on Monday. So let's take a look at what you may have missed in Shaban. Crazy English, crazy life, crazy work, crazy study. Crazy! Crazy! Crazy life! Crazy! Better, better, better. Good, good, good. What is happening here? <laughs> yeah, is it, so are confused. you casting a spell? <laughs> he's basically duping the audience. He's just talking he's shit. <laughs> he's just talking absolute <laughs> shit. Let's get crazy. You know what? I lost my job today. Are you kidding me? No, I'm <laughs> serious. I think that kid gets it. See the kid looking at he the gets, camera? He's like, he's like, this is uh, bullshit. This is some bullshit, some anyway. bullshit right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was, was super a fun. fascinating one. So I just want to preface this real quick. Or mm -hmm. pro yeah, 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 exactly. Um, we broke down, we did a full on expose documentary pretty much about Crazy English, which was an English speaking cult that was in China when we were in China. Yeah. Um, and it's crazy. We, we talked about the rise and the fall of that. And it yeah. started in the kind of late 90s and mm -hmm. it went all the way up and actually it's, no, early it 90s. still exists. Mm -hmm. It still exists. But it's not like it used to be. It, fall, it yeah. fell heavily because there was one pin, pivotal moment where yes, this happened. Yes. But basically, the government was going after this guy, uh, boosting him at the same time, and also trying to keep him keep him down because he was getting millions of people to join this English cult. It was mm. like an English speaking it cult, was a cult, a cult in, yeah. in mainland China. And we watched it take over, and mm -hmm. uh, we wanted to kind of talk about the history of that. Yeah, because it was something we both saw in, when we were in China. Yeah, so if you mm -hmm. go to patreon.com. Oh, yeah. If you go to patreon.com forward slash ADV podcasts and join the uh, Shaban Ho tier, you'll gain access to all of the Shaban Ho episodes in the past. And, of course, this one about Crazy English, our most recent one. I think this is a really fascinating one. Um, mm -hmm. Shaban Ho is also a place where we hang out with you guys. We answer your questions and stuff. And it's a do, VIP show. It's a VIP show. It's a whole other show every single Monday. And like yeah. you said, you get access to all the previous catalog if you join. It's the best, also the best way to support us. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Anyway, can't wait to see you guys there. So, uh, yeah, let's continue with the show. So what do we have in Wumao Corner today, Seamilk? Well, actually, I wanted to, if you guys are interested in, um, uh, in uh, what's it called? In the uh, great translation movement type stuff. Mm -hmm. There's other people out there kind of doing this stuff. Yeah. Now, I wanted to shout out this guy, uh, W.A. Ferris, William Ferris. You can follow mm -hmm. him on Twitter at uh, Wa Ferris, mm -hmm. W.A. Ferris. Yeah. Um, he says, another example from earlier this year of someone going to jail for their Twitter post that provoked trouble. Yeah. And this is the classic law that we always see, provoking trouble and starting quarrels. Yeah, yeah. This law in China can be used for anything. Absolutely anything. Anything, yeah. right? Two tweets critical of PRC leaders, three tweets that damaged China's image, more examples in state prosecution speech of the PRC. So go to the next slide here. There, he does some fantastic legal document stuff. Where yeah, he, with proper translations. Yeah, yeah, with proper translations. And he goes through and uh, shows people that you can, in China, go to jail for using a VPN. Yes. For posting on Twitter, for going on YouTube. People go to jail in China for writing a comment on forums on yes. the internet, for God's yeah. sakes, or p tweeting at someone. Right. Correct. You go to jail for that. So whenever you see these guys trying to say, oh, in China, people can still use the internet. They can use a VPN. No, they can't. Yes. Okay. It's If you do use a VPN and you actually post something somewhere, you can actually end up going to jail or having terrible things happen to you. And this guy covers this a lot yeah. um, with lots of documents, which is very, very good. I've been recently uh, following his work. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so what is this nonsense? <laughs> Are you ready for this? Sure. Are you ready for this? Sure. So... Yeah, and I'm not tooting our own horn. Just saying, we do give a lot of advice to China on how to do their propaganda because we're always making fun of their shit that doesn't work. Yes. Right? Let me give you another example of something that doesn't work. This is where they try to not be serious. They try to bring in an American comedian. Okay? American comedian. Okay. Read, just read that. American comedian. This is CGTN. So, by the way, everybody, CGTN is China's state media. Like it says right there, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, down there. CGTN, of course, is, uh, you know, just the propaganda. It just It's like national... It's the English-speaking propaganda yeah. arm. Yeah. Of so China. it says, American comedian says, U.S. blaming China while ignoring own citizens. Let's see comedy in action. Okay, it's a comedian, right? Yeah, but Chinese state media comedian. Okay, let's listen. 
what they're passing off as a comedian. The G7 Summit in Hiroshima, Japan. Where better for my home country, the U.S., to get together with some other nations? The U.S. out of the equation. The other six countries' GDPs barely add up to the same as China's alone. I mean, Canada and Italy each have a, a gross domestic product of only two trillion dollars. That's that's what Jeff Bezos spends on a nice steak dinner. Point being, the G7 is not really a group of seven important countries. It's the U.S. and six vassal states. Where's the joke, by the way? It wasn't funny. He's not a comedian. No, it turns out the comedy here is just took me about one minute of digging. Yes. All I had to do is hit Google real quick and look up his name. And it turns out, you know what, you know what this American comedian is? Who is this just very genuine comedian that CGTN just found naturally? Yeah, they're like, oh, American oh, comedian. let me find this funny comedian, and mm. he'll be able to talk the truth for mm -hmm, us, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, wait a second. Uh, it's Lee Camp, who is a uh, uh, correspondent for Russia Today, yes. RT, which is Russia's state-controlled propaganda international news television network funded by the Russian government. Remember we said that China and Russia were going to start uh, sharing shills? Yes, yes. Well, they're, it's, they're being passed around right now. Dude, you know, I get so sick and tired of uh, Ch Chinese state media lying about the people they interview or yes. bigging them up yes. or misrepresenting yes. them. It's not yes. a U.S. comedian. And yeah. In fact, um, should, should we just show people the, the, the title swap there? <laughs> hey, no, 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 no. I don't no. know what you're talking about. Okay. I have no idea what you're talking about. As you can about. see, U.S. But, but I think, you know, no, the, the, correct title, oh, the correct title. Fair enough. Yeah, the correct title. GDP barely add up to the same up. as China's it's weird, yeah, I don't know it just, how that. It's oh. weird. I guess YouTube like figured it out. Yeah, or... American traitor working for Russian <laughs> state media surprises world by working for China as well. <laughs> They're so lazy. Like if they, yeah. I think if they want to share people, yeah. what they should do is like talk behind. Cl no, I'm giving advice again. No, Bad. stop, no, stop no, giving no advice. No more advice. I'm sick of helping you guys. Oh, but what I want oh, to point oh, out sorry, is very yeah. important is right after that. Six okay, after we see states. that he's actually just works for Russian state media <laughs> yeah. propaganda. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, okay. They should say Russian propagandists talk smack about America. That's literally what it, cause it <laughs> yeah, is. Yeah. It now works for China. Yes, yes. <laughs> we are, I should say, we are now using yes, this, this Russian propaganda. Yeah. Anyway, uh, what a joke. I guess if you suck at comedy and mm -hmm. the, you, you go, to, go into life as a comedian, but you're not funny, your next kind of path in life is to work for state media in an authoritarian country. Correct. Where you're not allowed to make jokes anymore. You're just allowed to read talking points and go in a funny voice. Yeah. What? The U.S.? I mean, come on. G7? Wow. <laughs> there's no joke. No, there's no joke. Jeff Bezos is rich. That's as far as Water? Am I right? <laughs> ha, you drink it. <laughs> it sucks. I'm a comedian. It's a straw. It's blue. <laughs> Bloody this idiot. Is, this is why democracies will always be so chad. It's yeah. Because you're allowed to be funny and actually yes. make fun of shit. Imagine he made a joke a about Putin. <laughs> yeah, He'd be totally he totally lynched. He's done. Yeah, he's, that's it. Anyway, yeah. uh, anyway, what is this Hua Chin Ying? Funniest Russian comedian. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Anyway. Yeah. Um, the, the funny thing is, is you know how, you know how that, that segment looks so forced, right? Yes. Well, it's actually a huge point in Russia and China media right now is to talk shit about G7, right? Yeah, yeah. And it's funny, because right after I watched that segment, I saw this from China State, State yeah, Hua spokesman. Yeah, yeah, the spokesperson, spokesman, yeah. Uh, spokesperson, sorry. Uh, yeah. G7 versus the rest of the world. And there, there's some freaking reason they're so obsessed with saying the G7 is little or something. Yes, because they're trying to belittle it. Yeah. Because it's actually very powerful. And they're afraid of it. They're so, so worried about it. And mm. there's a huge, huge influx of uh, propaganda surrounding BRICS, which is Brazil, Russia, India, uh, China, and South Africa. Yeah. And actually, right after this, I wanted to uh, remind you guys of something that happened. Yeah. So I made a video, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, did you that's, put that's did you put the elected later. official thing in? Oh no, I didn't. Sorry. Oh, I can oh, man. I can uh, I can drag it over if you want. Yeah, because I wanted to make a point of. Um, sure. Yeah, if you can just chuck that there, we'll show it. You know, the whole point is that China completely misrepresents the people that they hire, right? Yes. So, for instance, that guy, U.S. comedian, but when you look at it, it's actually not a U.S. comedian at all. He's just a I mean, toady. That's a, up to interpretation. Yeah, he's a toady for, you know, Russia yeah. state media. Right. So there was another one that they did recently. Uh, um, it was a little while ago, wasn't it? It's not that long ago. A couple of months, maybe. Um, okay. Yeah. Let me Coming just, up. before we continue, uh, I wanted to pull this up. Yeah, I'll get back to the G7 thing in a second. Yeah. Let us take a look. Let it be. It's right there. It's 
right there. Uh, this right one? There. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Nope. Diplomacy wrong is program. no doubt a hot topic. Yeah, right. It is the wrong one. Um, let's see. Open with... I'm just getting it over here, guys. Let's look at the, the title of this particular... Diplomacy is no doubt a hot topic of the what? CPC former National elected Congress. Official. And China has up. always been committed yeah. to its foreign policy goals. But it's, it's weird. Moving. It's all glitched out. Try yeah, again. I'll start it again. Yeah. Uh, OBS is just not has not sorted itself out. It's one of those things, you know, you can't blame it because it's open source and Diplomacy free. Diplomacy yeah. is no doubt. A all right. <clears throat> so... The whole what this this is called on CGTN. It says former U.S. elected official. They like to do this, and they like to do this by not giving specifics. So I mean, this when you look at the title yeah. of this, it says former U.S. elected official on China's diplomacy. Yeah. Now you would think, oh, this must be a credible source, just like U.S. comedian, right? Yeah, U.S. comedian. He must be funny. <laughs> let's see how this. Let's see this guy. Can you picture it in your mind? If you think of a former U.S. elected official, I'm thinking, you know, some dude's wearing a suit and tie. Yeah, a senator. Yeah, I think a like senator or, or a representative. Maybe a little bit of gray hair. Yeah. Maybe he's got some library books. Uh, not library books. For you know sure. what I mean? Like yeah, no, books in, in like a, den. a bookshelf behind yeah. him. You know what in I'm talking office. about? He's got like a leather chair with those yeah. little studs on Diane, it. Diane, we'll get uh, we'll get back to. The, well, I have a meeting right he's now. He's got like maybe yeah. a flagpole, you know, yes. with a flag and a couple yes. of plants. You know? or, or if it's a woman, it's like a pantsuit. Yeah. <laughs> you know what okay, I mean? Okay. So now that we yes. painted the pic picture of what a former, um, you know. U.S. diplomacy guy, no, elected, official, elected official, elected official That's looks the like. Title of this. Let's see what China, uh, China's idea of a former U.S. elected official is. Let's take a look. Of the CPC National Congress, in China has. Oh wait, I, I feel the need. She said CPC, right? Oh yes. So, let's do it. CPPCC. CPPCC. Of course. It's had to do that. Anyway, let's get back to it. Let's see what he looks committed like. committed to its foreign policy goal of promoting world peace and common development. A press conference has just been held on diplomacy with Chinese characteristics. Boring. So what a diplomacy with Chinese characteristics. <laughs> that, just means, that just means you get slapped. You know, diplomacy, if you look it up in a dictionary, it has a meaning. Yes. You don't need to have Chinese diplomacy with Chinese characteristics. You know when you whatever. add on with Chinese characteristics, it means the opposite. Yeah. Every time. Yeah. Democracy with Chinese characteristics, so not democracy. Socialism with Chinese. Yes. It means so not, not socialism. socialism yeah. yeah, it just means this is not diplomacy. Yes. I would anyway. like to talk about this in this episode, and I invited Jim Nobles, who is a former elected official from the Washington State in the United States. Hi, Jim. How are you doing today? Good to see you. <laughs> Julian from Trailer Park Very Boys good. appeared. Oh my, oh my God! Yeah, that's this, actually haunting. This is. Uh, <laughs> Who is this former official? It's not what I would expect if you say a former elected official from Washington State. What's going on? What was he an on? official of? Garbage I, collection? I, stop. I'm, I'm sorry, so but it's like, mean. no, but we looked, we did look him up. And yeah, like, okay, so we do due diligence, yes, right? Yes, yeah. I can't, I found like a, a ballot thing. It was like yeah. you could vote for him for like the lieutenant representative of the governor's the office, office. of the governor's of, right? uh, yeah, whatever. But he didn't get it. But he didn't win. No, he didn't. He wasn't elected as that. But he was elected as, um, what was it? Something about alcoholism board and helping teens in need of the EMT stuff or something. Yeah. Anyway, some position like small a, little like yeah, I mean, yeah whatever it's, right it's, it's a it's a little thing like oh you you got to like i don't know fill the coffee mugs or something up in this thing probably I, well, anyway it's not it could, be little it could, it be, could something be something it could be fancy but it's not i wouldn't say fancy i'd say it's probably beneficial for society yeah right, yeah okay yeah. what i'm trying to say is that they misrepresented this yes. guy so bad yeah they're like former they're talking about the cpc right yeah and then all of a sudden, and diplomacy. Yeah, and diplomacy. And all of a sudden, they're talking to a former U.S. Of elected official. Yes. Without a title, without, yes. an, act without an actual position. No. Right. Um, um, and almost all, no internet footprint. Yes. You know, if you're in public office, people can find what you did. Yes. That's it was very difficult to find office. out anything about this guy. Yeah. Anyway. So, uh, yeah, just to show you that they'll go for anyone and misrepresent them in order to it's, try and prove That was our point. point. Yeah. 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 As they like to say, they like to have vague titles that sound very important. Yes. It's like, oh, like that last guy. Like, oh, he must have been on like SNL or something. It's like, no. <laughs> yeah. No, the yeah, comedian guy. Shit Night Live is what it was. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Sputnik, Sputnik <laughs> Night Live. Night Live. Yeah, exactly. Like, Take the peels. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> anyway, I mean, I just got to give him a little bit of advice, Mr. Nobles. If you're going to have an interview on state TV, maybe wear a shirt, button down shirt, a collared shirt. 
Yeah, he needs a, a little rum and coke. To, <laughs> yeah. He Dude, you look, you look appalling. Don't anyway. be No, rude. I mean, I'm being from a, like, a presentation point of view. Not yeah. him as a human being. Yeah, he could be a great you guy. You know, like you, you turn up to work hungover and look like shit, you, you look appalling. Sure. You turn up to an interview sure. looking like that, you look appalling. <laughs> sure. Anyway. Anyway, hopefully yeah. he's a good guy and I don't know, maybe he like made it right and stopped going to state media to be an elected US yeah, official. Yeah. Anyway, let's yeah. uh let's continuing. get back to sorry, let's because, get back to your G seven um, Yeah, you know, I was talking about the G seven and China's got this mad hate boner for the G seven right yeah, now. Yeah, they hate the G seven. Holy crap. Yeah. Um, like there is so much propaganda coming out about BRICS and how it's gonna take down the G seven and how by the way, they're not they're not even related. No they're not even related, right? No. BRICS was supposed to be some sort of economic agreement be between these countries that I was talking about, right? Mm -hmm. So I made this video because I was getting frustrated with it. Yeah. I was talking to this uh, economics expert about this whole thing. We were just yeah. shooting the shit. And I was like, you know what? Enough. So I did shit tons of research on this, right? And it turns out this whole BRICS thing is absolute nonsense. Sure. Um, so this is not the right thing. That's, what is that's this? That's later. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I got to go back? No, no, no. You can go forward. Go forward. Right there. So I make a video about bricks. Yeah, and I'm like, a this good is video. bullshit, yeah. right? And it was, a, yeah, it was a good video. Everyone, yeah. you know, seemed to be enjoying it. And then all of a sudden, as I'm sleeping, I, w well, I wake up in the morning. I find out that while I was sleeping, they age restricted it. Yeah, a video, might yeah. I add, about an economic agreement between Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa got age restricted. And it says, we've reviewed your content and determined that it may not be suitable for viewers under the age of 18 per our community guidelines. As a result, we've age restricted the following content. So they age restrict my video. Yeah, yeah. So the whole night, it gets taken out of the algorithm. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, when a YouTube video is age restricted, it cannot be recommended. It cannot yeah. be auto played. It yeah. cannot be shared. Yes. You know. So basically, what a it means mm -hmm. is that you can't see the video unless you're logged into yeah. YouTube and you know where to go find it. Yeah. Right. And the whole how YouTube works is the algorithm pushes your video out. Right. Mm -hmm. If you don't have that, you'll you'll never get views. It sure. doesn't matter what you're doing. Yeah. Right. So this this goes on this video about economics. Yes. Right. And I'm like, this is absolutely ridiculous. So I appeal it within one minute. Within one minute, they're like, yep, oh, sorry, we made a mistake. Yeah. So what happened, I suspect, is right now, China is going insane about this BRICS thing and yeah. insane again about this hatred for the G7. Yeah. And they really don't want you to see this video. Yeah. Like, they're doing everything in their power. I, I, They might have people in YouTube. Mm -hmm. They might have people doing mass flag campaigns. They might yeah. have all kinds of stuff going on. And they have literally neutered this video to the point where you can't see it. I just want to show you a stat. Go to the next one. Go to the next I got to tell you guys, you know that videos don't just get age restricted. Okay. They yeah. don't just get age restricted. Right. They get age restricted if people flag them as being yep. inappropriate for, yes. for viewers under the age of 18. And so we have an army of Chinese, uh, you know, Wu Mao and, Russia bots, and no. Russian bots that actually constantly flag our videos as inappropriate, hoping it sticks. Yes. Because there's no way that a video about economics is going to be age restricted. What are you age restricting? I didn't even no, use bad language in this. Nobody would click that and say, this is not suitable for people no. under the age of 18 unless they had malicious in, content. You could use uh, this intent. in school. Yeah. Like yeah. literally, it's just an educational video, right? Anyway. Mm -hmm. Look at, just look at this. Take us out okay. of this real quick. Yeah. So the the bottom video says, why would you do this? China's dumbest nationalist about passport douche. 118,000 yeah. views, right? Yeah. Got 1,000 uh, 1, comments and 7,000 likes, right? Right. This BRICS video got the same amount of views, right? Yeah. More than double the amount of likes. So twice the engagement. Yes. Right? And then also almost double the amount of likes. And uh, comments, Sorry, yeah. sorry. Almost comments. double the amount, more than double the comments and, and almost double the amount of likes, which yeah. means there's twice as much engagement, therefore twice as many views usually. It's how it works. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't. It got completely murdered. Yeah. And it's getting absolutely no views now, despite, and a lot of people are like, it wasn't in my feed because they're either not yeah, it was age restricted. It's not pushed towards them. So I really, really implore you. Um, I put the link in the description. Can you please, please open this video in mm. another uh, window and know that if you're sharing this video, you are doing a serious, serious damage to the CCP because they are really pissed off about this to oh, the yeah. point where they employed some really nasty shit to try to get it to go away. Mm. But now I've gotten the age restriction removed. It doesn't repair anything, but it means you can share it now. So please share the video. I yeah. put like a 10 second clip here. Oh, you got a 10 second yeah, clip of your video here? Okay, let's watch a 10 second clip from Seamilk's video.
that was unfairly attacked Bricks, by or Brazil, Schilt. Russia, India, China, and South Africa. There has been a lot of talk recently about BRICS and the new BRICS dollar. The relevance of BRICS becomes more salient than ever. I've mentioned the BRICS alliance and how this alliance will change the U.S.-led world order. BRICS is not going to take over. You've heard about it by now, but if you haven't, BRICS is the new big kid on the block. Cool. I highly, 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 please, please implore you, please get that open. Uh, please rest, not only rescue the video, but push this message forward because it's obviously something that's doing a lot of damage. Yeah, they don't like it. They really they don't like it. They hate one. it. And we know when we're uh, flying over the target, we get a lot of flack. Yes. That happened last time when yeah. I posted about chain woman, you know, yeah. the, the yeah. abuse. I've been posting about the, you know, uh, domestic abuse issues in China. Man, they hate it. They've been yeah. sending the people after me. There's they obviously don't mandates want yeah. right now about don't talk about, like, don't let people in the West mm -hmm. talk about domestic abuse in China and don't let people talk about BRICS right now, unless it's yeah. positive for BRICS. And so if you're sharing content about those two topics, yeah. you are actively harming the Chinese government's mandates. Yeah. So we're going to hit Worldview? Yes. Okay, everybody, it's uh, Worldview, where we talk about everything in the world, specifically with regards to China. We're going to start with this um, hands-on approach. <laughs> it's a hands-on approach. Mm, some RTS nonsense in Venice, I believe. It's not, it's not nonsense. It's very what? good, actually. What, the hands? No, no, the, the video that was... In oh, the... I'm not talking about the oh, video. I'm gotcha. talking about the hands. Yeah, I think it looks kind of cool. I mean, it's kind of cool, I guess. Looks like someone's coming out. Of... That's awesome. What are you talking about? That's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, sorry, art hater. You live in a black marble castle, if you could. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like art, but you know, there's limits. It's cool. It's it's all right. Yeah. It's all anyway, right. Um, go say. If it was a real thing, here. if it, it was like a real thing all the way underneath, like there was a real uh, what if there statue, is? You don't. That'd know that. be cool. What if it's epic? It's down it's, there. It's actually just goat's building. Anyway. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> anyway, uh, mm -hmm. there was a video in the uh, Venice. A biannual, biannual, I guess it would yeah. be the tr uh, translation. Biennale. Um, and it's an art and culture exhibition, right? Mm. And somebody um, put a award-winning film about the uh, forced labor in Xinjiang, right? Right. Uh, and the camps in Xinjiang. And it was all about the re-education and like how it's a human rights atrocity that everyone needs to pay attention to. Yeah. What do you think happened? China was like... Screw you. We're out of here. Mm -hmm. They officially exited just over that video. A little crybaby. Can't handle this. Is, this so what? Do you mean exited as in took their ambassadors out and stuff? No, they exited the, the competition. Oh, the competition. They're like, no. You, okay. you know, China's not going to If you're going to show a video about Xinjiang, we're not going to be here type yes. thing. Okay. Yes. It's a spoiled baby. Yeah, it's government. nonsense. It's nonsense. Hmm. Um, <sighs> what about this? Under Elon Musk, Twitter has approved 83% of censorship requests by authoritarian governments. Oh, what a surprise. So, <laughs> free speech absolutists over here, mm -hmm. our, our favorite Elon Musk. Mm -hmm. You know, free speech at all costs. We'll remove all the restrictions. You know, no more of this, this censorship. Mm -hmm. Has now, t since taken ownership of, of Twitter, has now capitulated to 83% of requests from authoritarian governments to remove content. Mm. So Interesting. I mean, when a government has reached out, it says uh, the social network has restricted and withdrawn content critical of the ruling parties in Turkey and India, among other countries, including during electoral campaigns. So, I mean, we have a, literally a tanky platform at this point. It's it's pretty it's pretty nasty what's going on with Twitter. Um, you know, in some aspects, a lot of people are celebrating what's you know the changes, but so how do you celebrate this? No, you don't celebrate no. this. Unfortunately, this is a, a bad side of what of the changes here. I mean, you know? you're. I mean, like I, I I sense a tone in you that like is like yeah okay, it's not that bad. No, it's bad. Yeah. I'm not saying it's not bad. I'm, I'm saying not criticizing. That you know, I'm saying you're next. You will be next in this as a well, person I mean, who speaks out against I'm, the Chinese I'm government. I'm not trying to endorse sure. the way Twitter's going here. You have to understand that such huge changes to the platform have happened recently. Yeah. Massive mistakes that have been rolled back. Right. Massive mistakes as far as the whole verification thing. You saw what happened with that fake Pentagon video uh, yeah. you know, picture. Yeah. It destroyed stock markets for yeah. a little while. Um, it's, a huge, it's a huge, huge issue. And I'm hoping some of this stuff gets sorted out. It's getting worse, though. It I is. Mean, he's made public announcements now basically claiming that, yes, Taiwan's going to get invaded and there's nothing you can do about it. I get you know, it. Like yeah. it's, the writing's on the wall about where he stands on these issues, and he's cozied up to pretty much every dictator there is. Yeah. Um, it's not good for no. freedom of speech if you're no, looking no. at it. You know, on the, no, absolutely on the not. It's, uh, this is what happens when the pendulum swings too far one way. It comes yeah. back and swings too far the other way. 
Yep. You know, and the the whole thing is you have to find a balance somewhere in between. And right now we're seeing. I, uh, I, I kind of take, I don't take umbrage, but I disagree mm-hmm. with the whole pendulum swinging back. There's nothing, so? there's nothing conservative or swinging back in the direction of conservatism to capitulate to dictators. No, of course not. Conservatives don't like dictators. I'm not talking right? about conservatives here. I'm just saying the, the way things were before mm. got too out of hand. And so now they're getting too out of hand in the opposite direction. Sure, I just think those directions are different. Yes. Like, authoritarianism is, it doesn't matter what side you're on. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm not, but again, I'm not talking about U.S. politics here. No, 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 I know. I'm talking talking about global politics. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. And the way way Twitter's been run has been very, um, uh, I don't know, like American politics-centric. Sure, for sure. Yeah, and some policies, absolutely. Uh, pretty much all of it. It's like, you know, it, anyway. Yeah, but this Things is, yeah. are different now. Yeah. Things are different and it's changes. A lot of them are bad. Some people will argue that some of them are good. I caught you know the I mean? ad thing. Oh, you did? Yes, and it. I've watched. Oh, Guys, you got it? I, this is bullshit. You turned it off, right? I did. I turned off the function that runs ads during our show, guys. So if you're mm. seeing ads, that is not supposed to happen. No, it's not. Um, yeah. So anyway, I, this is I very worrying, apologize. and I really do hope that uh, this kind of shit stops. Yes. You know, honestly, yeah. any authoritarian government that blocks Twitter, for instance, shouldn't be allowed on the platform in what the you, first place. What are you doing? But they're endorsed. Yeah. They're using it and getting boosted by yeah. it now. China and Russian accounts are getting boosted by the blue check mark now. Yeah, it is. It's so, ridiculous now. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah. hopefully things change hopefully twitter just gets shut down it would yes. be nice if it just went offline I, that'd be the best situation for everyone wouldn't it i, I if he was as free speech absolutist and he really was for like the improvement of mankind he would have bought the company and then turned the servers that'd off. be the most chad thing ever yeah <laughs> you know what i mean destroy the monster that yeah exactly <laughs> yeah that would have been great yeah. anyway it's unfortunate now we've got to move on to the next thing which um let's take a look We've got that was your little bricks uh, segment. Oh yeah. So I wanted we, to We wanna we wanna endorse someone here, guys. Yes. You know, it's very difficult to actually find reasonable content creators out there. Yeah. Okay. In this day and age. Everybody's got an angle, you know, there's a lot of nonsense out there. But uh, there's a fantastic guy, and his name is Jordan Harbinger, and uh, I'd yes. like you to take a look. So much work. Actually, I was <laughs> yeah. want to um, so, go so, back for a sec. Oh, you want to? I want to preface it because yes, it's an excerpt do. from oh. a show that I, an episode that I really liked. So instead of you just pushing you towards Jordan's channel, yeah. I wanted to actually pinpoint a specific episode. Okay. So there's this group. This is fascinating. I think all of you guys will probably you can keep it up in the background. Mm-hmm. Um, there's there is this group of people, yes. uh, these mm-hmm. freedom fighters, right? Right. And. They are basically radicalized now to the point where they are, by the way, they're Korean Americans and Koreans from South Korea Yeah. that want to go like cause political change and revolution in North Korea. Interesting. Right? Instead of just like pamphlets and stuff, they will like do things. Right? Oh, interesting. And so they set up this whole thing where they got like fake guns and fake like uh, SWAT outfit type stuff. And they infiltrated the North Korean embassy in Spain. Hmm. And like held people hostage. Interesting. But this guy that Jordan interviewed, um, he's part of this amazing media project that covers like really touchy stuff. Hmm. And he wrote a book about this uh, their their endeavors. But basically, if you're interested in like the current state of North Korea, there's people that are literally trying to like overthrow the regime like abroad. Yeah, which is crazy. That's interesting. Yeah. Anyway, this is just a little excerpt of uh, this episode, which is episode two eighty. Uh, sorry, eight twenty, and so it's much. in the description. Um. We want you guys to subscribe to Jordan's YouTube channel, which is fairly new. Yeah. Um, and tell him uh, the yeah, China, the China show is sent to you. Yeah. So if you do go check out his videos, um, whether you subscribe or not, we'd appreciate you leaving a comment yeah. saying, you know, the China show is sent you. So here's a little clip so you can see if you like it or not. It's worse. <laughs> yeah. So so they actually, um, they show up at the embassy. They It's a bunch of, of Korean American guys and Koreans standing outside the door of the Korean North Korean embassy in, in Madrid on this quite very quiet street. I actually went and pressed the buzzer myself when I was researching the book. And um, and people are actually looking at them like, what the hell is going on? Like it was suspicious looking. Um, so so Adrian showed up. He was wearing a, a, a suit and um, he had a, a gift bag and he had been to the embassy a few weeks earlier. And so he knocked on the door. The, uh, one of the staff came to the door and he said, um, I have a gift for Mr. So, uh, the, the attaché. And he said, can you go and get him? I want to hand this to him. So the, the person let him sit on a kind of a bench right inside the door. They closed the door. And then the, and then the North Korean uh, staffer went to find Mr. So. And while he w- went off, Adrian opened the door 
these guys pulled balaclavas on their head, pulled out their fake guns, and ran in like almost like a, a spec ops mission. Um, although the funny thing is, they're not really trained, you know. So they're they're kind of running in. They're doing their best, but it's, um, you know, and they and they kind of they round everyone up and they and they sort of, you know, it's like a highly kinetic thing. It looks like a kidnapping. What happened was they actually missed one woman. She was the wife of one of the diplomats, and she completely panicked. She thought that everyone was going to be killed, and because there's this kind of um, brainwashing of North Koreans that if they hear a South Korean accent, if they hear Americans, whatever they might hear, inside their embassy, they think that some really bad stuff's going to happen. So she jumped off of a balcony. She injured herself. She's got blood pouring on her uh, off her head, and she injured her hip. She crawled out this kind of secret door that that nobody knew about from the the Free Joseon team into the street, and then a guy pulled over. He took her to the a clinic. And she's saying the most craziest things. So she's saying, I'm from the embassy and there's people that invaded and they're going to eat the children. That's what mm-hmm. she said to these these uh, police officers. And the- so, yeah, just an excerpt. It's a fascinating story. But this whole revolutionary team of like Koreans abroad mm-hmm. trying to take down the North Korean regime is wild. I got, I got to say, though, like it's not, oh, you're brainwashed. You hear an, an accent and, you know, you got to fear them. No, they're running in with guns and balaclavas. No, no, no. But know? it's part of the brainwashing that yeah. they teach their children that Americans yeah. will eat your children. That's yeah, the yeah. whole point. I, I get that yeah, point. Yeah. But like... Yeah. It's not that she was like, oh, brainwashed about like, oh, no, they're panicking because I would also panic if people ran in <laughs> yeah, sure. with balaclavas and guns. And guns yeah. So, yeah, anyway, that's a bit weird. it's a fascinating, <laughs> fascinating story. Yeah, uh, definitely check it out and give uh, Jordan a subscribe or you can check out his audio version of the show. Uh, both yeah. are in the description. Yeah, please check it out, guys. He's, By the way, he's we've been on the show like yep. four or five times now and our episodes are fairly recent. So you'll find yeah, that you'll be able to find interviews of us on his show yes. as well. So you can dig through that if you like to hear. Yes. Um, anyway, uh, let's continue on with the show. Shout out to Jordan Harbinger, great guy. Um, what do we got next? Do we have something next? Oh, this is your, yeah, go click. That's what it looks like if you that's, go over there. If you want to go subscribe and you should, you that's go do a, that. That's a little preview of what you might um, see if you go over there. Yes. So uh, the last thing I wanted to uh, talk about today is, this, you remember that guy, the ex-Apple employee that got arrested? Yeah. Well, not arrested, he got I charged. Mean, sorry, charged mm-hmm. and then fled, right? Yes. Where is he now? You know, the stupidest thing... I, I, and I believe it is this guy's. They did actually like get him, and then they like um, charged him or whatever. But then they let him go out on bail, and then he just fled to China. Stop doing that. When you, it's obviously a flight risk, you know. Yeah. So he stole. Um, <laughs> okay, Wang Wei Bao, the ex Apple employee who stole massive amounts of proprietary information from Apple, including the entire autonomous driving source code, is now head of autom- autonomous driving. At Jidu, an electric vehicle joint venture between Baidu and car maker Geely. What a surprise. What a surprise. What a surprise. So now all of that tech is gone. This so Apple's R and D, Apple's source code, Apple's autonomous driving technology is now in the hands of a Chinese company. Nice. And job. the Chinese government. Nice, nice job. And that is what's happening all over. You see, this is the unfortunate thing is that uh, the Chinese government does not foster an environment of creativity. No. So rather than being competitive in a fair manner, yeah. they steal and cheat yeah. in order to compete. Um, and it's not it's not cool. It's endorsed by the government because you're yeah. handing the government what they need without any of the costs and research and innovation. Yeah, and that's the problem is that they actually have these programs like the they Thousand do. Talents program. It's a government they, program. They incentivize people. Like this guy, they would have approached him and said, hey, bring that stuff back to us, steal the technology, and we'll let you set up a lab and we'll you know, give you millions and millions of dollars or whatever. And so yeah. they do it. You know, There's yeah. no reason not to. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, it's remind a, me of that uh, diabetes commercial. Okay, Call diabetes. Liberty. Okay. No anyway, reason not. To. Here's the thing, guys. Um, <laughs> if you are investing in China, and if you you know if you've got your four hundred one k or whatever, and you're investing in, in, look for something called Asia Emerging Markets. That means China. Maybe don't, because you're investing in um, a corrupt system, a system of theft. You know, just saying. It's up to you. It's just super saiyan, dude. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, so that was just a kind of a what did you expect kind of a moment. Yes. And, of course, we talked about the PowerStar CPU, remember? It was a, a, an episode or two ago where we showed you that uh, China has released its own homegrown CPU. Turns out it is just an Intel i3. Yeah. 
Okay, it's proven now. Because... We were playing it safe, being like, we don't know 100%. We know 99%, yeah. but it has now been confirmed. Yeah, it's been confirmed because Geekbench uh, stats have been released. Somebody did like benchmarks on it, and it's it's pumping out a, uh, a genuine Intel CPU ID. Yeah. And using the Comet Lake architecture. So, so it they said that it would be using their own Storm something architecture. No, what was it called? I can't uh, remember. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, anyway, it doesn't matter because now it's been proven that it is an Intel i3. So again, these big governmental sort of pushes from China. Oh, look, we're making our own homegrown CPUs, our own AI, our own this and that. It's... <laughs> Just weak, garbage. Weak follower. Yeah, it is. It was weak follower, you know, <laughs> like said a power leader. It was weak follower. They made they <laughs> made a nothing. A joke, yeah, they made nothing. It. They made shit. They didn't make a homegrown CPU. Nothing. They did nothing. Not to go back to the shared bikes thing, but this what this is what China does with its government programs. Yeah. It's just waste. Wasteful. So you've invested in some kind of new <laughs> Chinese technology tech I3. startup type thing, you know, yeah. and you get an old i3 which they're buying buying from the United States, shipping to China, erasing, just basically taking a, a laser eraser, erasing the code, putting on their own thing and saying, here, we made it. P-Star, P3. You know, it's so ridiculous. I don't know if it would bring shills all the time, but why they, they promote this propaganda on behalf of the Chinese government, right? These yeah. Americans, Canadians or whatever. And then yeah. they never go back and like exam. They'll be like, they came out with a new CPU and they'll never like make a retraction or say, oh, actually it turned out to be that. You know what I mean? Yeah, or AI or whatever. I think that's the best way to start sifting through what is real. Like if you can, you can have a news network that can make a mistake. Yeah. And then they'll go back and be like, actually, that was wrong. Blah, yeah. blah, blah. You know, was, this is actually what happened. But if you get people that are doing propaganda like for, about this kind of stuff and then they don't go and retract this stuff or like make a correction and stuff, then you know who you're dealing with. Absolutely. You know I mean? <clears throat> yeah, you're dealing with a U.S. comedian or a, yes. a former U.S. elected official. Yes, mm. or a you know, Canadian whatever. Yeah. A lot of Canadians. Canadian drunkard or something. Something like that. Yeah. You know, yeah. Anyway, um, that's it pretty much. It's time for us to move on to Yamcha, which, of course, is our uh, Q&A section where we answer your questions and you question our answers. And this stays up, well, live now, obviously. You get to watch it. stays up over the weekend. On Monday, we take it out of the show. But if you want to see the whole Uncut show, including the very lengthy Q&As, the fun parts, uh, you can always go over to patreon.com forward slash ADV podcasts. And uh, any tier will give you access to the full show's and all of them in the past. But the best thing you can get there is our Monday show. Yeah, of course. You want the Monday show. Yeah, if you can, if you can afford it, if you have the means, we'd love to see you on Monday for Shaban Ho. Yes. Anyway, let's get into the questions. Quala, what do we got? Quala 1203 says, got into a traffic accident with a guy who wants your money? Need to file a lawsuit from an insurance company who scammed you? This Yum Cha segment of the China Show is brought to you by the law firm Just David & Co. LLC. Oh, oh, yes, and I do have that here somewhere. I think I did bring it back, didn't I? I've got it. 